This is the CC Radio Podcast. Hey kids, welcome to the Countdown Movie Review of M. Night Shyamalan's superhero kind of film, Glass. My name is Wayne. And my name is Paul. That's right, this is our, what, fourth feature review in the new format, so thanks for joining us for these uh, shorter and more succinct and I'm just assuming that if you, yeah, if you're dialing this one up, you have seen the movie? Yeah. Or some of you... If not. Yeah, some of you... Nevertheless, we will delineate spoilers as we yeah, normally yeah. do, just in case you're interested to know whether you should see the film or not. But before we get there, a quick little bit of feedback about last week's feature review, Bandersnatch, or Black mm. Mirror's Bandersnatch. First of all, from Mike Margosian, who's a member, valued member of our Facebook listener community. I know, Mike. Link is in the show notes. He said, we asked that this could somehow work on the big screen, this idea of you know choice yeah. between everybody. It's been done before. Oh, really? The film is called Mr. Payback, an interactive movie, which Mike said he went and saw when he was about 13 back in 1995. Oh, well. It was horrible, but you voted for your seat and most votes went that way. So... So it's been done and failed. Because yeah. I've never heard of this. Well, think about it. If you do this, you have to now apply tech to every seat in a damn house. That's right. So then it's like, well, how much and obviously is movie, never, never made it here. Exactly. How yeah. much is the movie going to have to make to cover that shit? So anyway. Yeah, All thanks right. for that, Mike. Nice one. Then, uh, so Daniel from the I'm To Be Journey podcast, who's going to be a guest co-host on the show very soon, mm-hmm. said, uh, where's the ding counter for the amount of sexual puns Wayne uses for Snatch? <laughs> I, I wondered if anyone noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I suggested I had to edit a few out as well. Yeah, there was a few. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, in the tweet I put up, I sort of said, you know, we choose our own adventure this week as we review Bandersnatch. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> Super Movie Bros Dave said, uh, be careful using Choose Your Own Adventure. The company which made the books is suing, is suing Netflix for the use of that phrase. Good God. Can you believe what litigious society, well, I was going to say we live in, Americans live in. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's Apple's fault. <laughs> it's Apple's fault? Yeah, see, you know Windows? You just full stop. That's no, not enough, no, no, no. <laughs> Windows came from like, you know, like photocopiers. They had these icon designs on their fucking displays. And that's where Windows, if they had copyrighted icons, Windows would never have happened. And all this sort of shit happened. Now Apple fucking patents everything that it sneezes out, right? So it <laughs> tries not to let anyone develop anything new. It's weird. But okay. Yeah, it's like that. Anyway, so there you go. There's a, a lawsuit which Netflix may settle out of court, as it did with the Church of Satan over use of some imagery and oh, things. Oh, and bloody Sabrina. And, yeah, the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Good God. Okay, well, that is the preamble to the show. Let's get into the review proper of Glass. And I have the vital statistics here, of course. Let's it is them. the third film in the... Uh, what are they calling it? It's like the 1570... I don't know, some train trilogy oh, or some it, shit? It's actually called something, is it? It's got something like that, anyway. Yeah. It's uh, obviously directed, written, and produced by M. Night Shyamalan. It stars James McAvoy, Bruce Willis, Anna Taylor-Joy, Sarah Paulson, and Samuel L. Jackson, all returning from previous either Split or Unbreakable. It's uh, 129 indeterminately long minutes, yeah. and its budget was $20 million, <laughs> about twice that of Split. How much? 20? Yep. Is that all? Yeah, so it wasn't a huge, but uh, again, twice as much as Split, which is bloody hell. Interesting. All right, Wayne, that's what the vitals are. It's so far only taken 16 million, but it's only been out for a day in America. I can't believe it's only 20 million. Okay. All right, right, fair enough. Good, well done. Uh, What's it about? Well, like it's two prequels, Glass takes off from the notion that you and I, we have gods in our midst. There are humans around that have morphed by a mixture of latent genius and severe emotional trauma into superheroes and arch-villains. So super-powered being David Dunn, Bruce Willis, he keeps uh, Philadelphia safe as the Overseer, a contemporary superhero. I don't mind Overseer. I don't, I don't care. I don't, it's, it's not bad. It could have been So it's the... <laughs> Maybe not the best, okay. but I'm not. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on putting that one in. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to the soundboard. So, yeah, David Dunn, he, he's he's the overseer, and he's like got super strength and a rain poncho. And then uh, Kevin... <laughs> I'd w- argue he has a rain poncho and super strength. And super strength, exactly. <laughs> Superpowered uh, fucking Kevin Wendell Crumb is James McAvoy. He's more of the uh, kidnap cheerleaders and kill them type variety. Mm. He's the horde because he has multiple personalities, and it's all weird because sometimes he's bulletproof. Wham. All right, these two meet and fight, and then they get arrested, and then they get sent to the absolute worst psychiatric hospital Correct. I've ever fucking come across, with most wildly incompetent staff. Correct. More on that later. There they meet the wheelchair-bound Mr. Glass, Sam Jackson, who attempts to break them all out so he can execute his arch-villain plan. That's pretty much it in a uh, in a nutshell. Yeah. All right then, Wayne. Well, what did you think of? Uh, I mean, Glass. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let me just say that there was some. Like, I, I got an inkling that Paul was not a fan, and that sometimes helps me, sometimes it hinders me. Okay. I don't know what it did this time because this movie's fucking shit. Well, therefore, I would suggest it hindered. Well, no. Or at least it's the truth because typically, it's if I'm not expecting much, mm. then I'm more likely to like it. Yes. But that's the problem here, isn't it? Oh, this movie is the first 45, mi- 45 minutes now. I'm a man of classically short attention span, no doubt. No doubt, right? 45 minutes of this movie, I'm in. I'm in all the way because I want to know. I'm like, tell me what happened to this guy. What's he doing now? What happens with this guy? Ooh, it's his actual son. The guy who played the kid in the fucking previous movie. Yes, actually... it was. Spencer Treat. Yes. Treat Clark. And I thought that was really cool. And now he's like an Alfred and he's kind of helping David Dunn. Wicked. But uh, then it just chose to do nothing, man. It is not unbearable, but it's not good. Yeah. It has a few redeeming elements, but they're way too hard to come by. And the pace of this thing is just glacially slow and mm-hmm. not in a way that works. Because sometimes that can work. This is not one of those times. What did you think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with this is, for me, I had high expectations. It's the only film in January. The only film in January too. we're covering cinematically this, this month. Yeah. Because there's bugger all out that mm. uh, is sort of our demographic or what we aim for. So I was quite high after Split. I really enjoyed Split. I, it, Split I wouldn't was say, a revelation. Almost. I wouldn't say it knocked my socks off, but I really dug it, and it was my one of my big surprises. I remember of the hell out of that movie. Yeah, I, you know, I was really big on that. James movie. McAvoy was was amazing in that film, and so to come into this, oh, and we're now we're linking it all together, and Bruce Willis is back, and presumably he's going to care because this is a universe that he could get yes, behind. He's in this franchise, and ex- exactly my problems with the film are exactly what you said and implied. First of all, it's very very slow. You have a film about these three established characters yeah. and you barely let them interact until 100 there! minutes in. My first point exactly. It's like fucking what? An hour in before these guys are in the same room. It is halfway through the film before Glass even speaks. Yeah, I know. And you, you're given all this time. This languishing second act, right? Gives you time to think, right? Mm-hmm. Which you don't want. No, right? not in this film. Not, not in this film. Not in a film where, as you have also implied, and this is where I take great umbrages because it's my field. The psychiatric facility is staffed by four people. Dude, can we talk the, about? Let's just talk the about that. Three of the most uh, apparently dangerous, psychologically challenged people ever. There's two serial killers and, and an unknown. They're yep. all classed as whatever hostiles, right? Probably mass murder in Glass's case, but anyway, yes. So as we said, they get caught and then they get put in this facility, and it seems like it's just a big house with two orderlies. One wh- security guard. One. Well, I mean, like a security, not police, security guard, like mm-hmm. old guy too, right? And Sarah Paulson. And that's the whole system. There's two doors between the, the cell and the fucking outside world. This is stupid. I don't know why this uh, is like this. Yeah, but but hang on. But we had cameras that could flash it at, at Kevin and make him change <laughs> personalities. And we had a tank of water that would flood David Dunn's cell and make him drown. I'm just like, what, 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 what <laughs> kind of de- security you know what? is that? That would be... F- it's bullshit. But that whole thing is visually interesting. I'm fine with that being an aspect of it. I'm not fine with it being manned by two really obviously dickheaded orderlies. Like, this is stupid, right? And there's not even cops on the on the premises or anything. It's just dudes yep. there. And then, for the entire film, I was just led to believe that they put him in the West Wing or whatever they said. Yeah. Right, okay. Suddenly, at the in the film's third act, shall we say, and this will, it's a minor spoiler only insofar as to say stuff happens in the third act, suddenly there's patients who can see everything. And I'm like, well, where were they the rest of the fucking film? Exactly. See, what's happening here, right, is that you're, you you had time to ask questions. Yes. Right? It's not a good enough film to hold your attention. Exactly. Christopher Nolan has made a career. Yeah. yeah, Christopher Nolan, he is the guy who will do some weird shit, but keeps you so entertained that you don't care until well after the movie. Like, he will do weird shit, but it still works because it's good. This is not that. So, I thought James McAvoy was really good. Like, like he does his best. But the problem with this film, yes. unlike Split, is we've seen him become the exactly. beast. Exactly! So, there's no thrill. And, and, and he changes into the beast sort of willy-nilly during this one. So, and he changes so fast and so quickly. It's almost comical rather than frightening. For some reason, M. Night has decided, okay... I'm going to basically de- dedicate half this movie to exposition of things that I already know you know, mm-hmm. right? So give us one or two scenes where he changes. Good. It's nice to watch. He's, he's an empty talented actor, right? Very talented. But I wanted to actually scream at the screen like, okay, I get it. He's got multiple personalities. Can we move the fuck on, please? Mm-hmm. So I, this, this is a really bad movie mistake. Like For a guy who's done so many movies, this is a bad script mistake. I think your, your pleasant, uh, the one positive of the film, which I'll give it credit for, is it looks nice. It looks nice because it, yeah, you're right. It's shot in that sort for of indie, indie-ish like thing. Yeah. I think it's, it's with good. some nice angles and a couple of nice directorial flourishes. So you know, M Knight knows he, knows his craft in that regard. But where and again, we're back in that 
sort of mid M night career slump of yes. a script which just falls apart yep. the scene. The other thing we need to mention is how belaboured the analogy is and the references are to comic book films and comic books. Uh, and this is a limited run. This is not this. It's not that. And but the and hero has to. <laughs> I'm just like, shut up, shut up. Why are you making the subtext so much text? You know why it got, when it got really weird. When Samuel Jackson's mom is like, is this a limited run? I'm yes. like, no one's mother says that. <laughs> there was a moment in the film, I don't know if you picked it up, where they're setting up for the big finale at this at this opening of this building. Yeah. And they have the cover of this magazine, which is profiling this building in some way. And That's it right. says, a marvel of a building. And the, the font is marvel. I know. I looked at that and I went, what are they doing what here? Are they, what is he trying to do with that? Exactly my question. Are, are you, is it other, uh, how subtle and sly no, I believe I? what they're doing is forcing a recognition trigger. Oh, they're hoping, because in Hollywood that's don't rec- subtle. Don't force a recognition trigger with something that's infinitely superior. That's daft. You, okay, when here's where ego comes in when it comes to movie yeah. making, okay? you Whoever thought that up, i.e. M. Night Shyamalan, right? It was definitely him. He's like, uh, fuck Marvel. This is a real superhero fucking tale. <laughs> and I'll tell you what this, you know, and that's what, and the other good bit about this is Sam Jackson makes a little speech to Bruce Willis over the PA system in, at one stage yep. in the show. And I thought that rang really well because it was both a <laughs> kind of thing, but it didn't sound like a, like okay. a, like a, you know, mustache twirling yeah. villain. So that was pretty cool. Sarah Paulson gives me the shits. I think Sarah Paulson in the right role is very, very talented. This I is think not she's that a, role. I think she's a very good actor. Yeah. I'd probably agree. In this, she's saddled with some inane dialogue and you can almost see the pain on her face as she's as she's uttering it. And I probably have to save my complaint for the other tier of cast members because it's a bit spoilery. Yeah. What they're doing in the film is is anyone's guess. Okay. Well, so, I, will, I will say something very vague, right? And the, the issue that I probably, the biggest issue among a few that I have with this film is that don't promise something and then don't give it to us. Correct. All right. That's just all I will say about that. We'll get into it in the stories. Okay. All right. Well, anything else you need to say? Obviously, this is a big, huge, wet fart of a film. We both agree it's, it's a failure. Yeah. And it's, it's just over long. I know I said a lot, but it is because it just takes too long. And by a certain stage, you don't care. 100% agree. All right, then. Well, let's get into spoilers then for Glass. Spoilers. 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 All right, have at it now. Free reign. We're going to spoil the shit out of what's remaining of Glass. Okay, so literally at one stage, people, it's like we are going to have a massive fight. You and me, the showdown of the century. We're going to go to this building. It's mm-hmm. just being built. Shows you the building. Shows you the place. Shows you in context to the fucking you know, facility. We're going to meet there. I'm going to let you out, you escape, you get there, we'll beat each other in front of the whole world. And that is played like, here it comes, right? Then they never oh, it's get a culmination. It's going to be, this is the third in, in what is exactly. now a trilogy, and we're building up to something epic, and mm-hmm. except we're not. Yes. And now we've got fucking, they never get out of the car park. They never get out of the fucking car park. And I was sitting there going, oh, halfway through the battle, I'm like, this battle's going long. Are we still going to, oh, we're not going to get that fucking thing. This is the battle. And I realized it halfway through. So I'm like... And it was Shit. really underwhelming. It wasn't great. The two best parts of the battle are both shown in the trailer. One is this pretty cool locked off shot in a car where yes. uh, the beast is yep. lifting, you know, flip the car on its head and the two cops or the, or the, I the cops or security guards at that point mm. are in the car. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, that was a cool shot. That was good. And then when he's running and there's a, the a, a sideways yeah, and he's, uh, he's dolly on all fours. and he's on all fours, yeah. that looked great. Th- those were all good, and those were the two good scenes in that in that in that sequence. Because first of all, they kill fucking everyone. Yep. Right. Well, all three of the main. All three of them yep. die. Did I sort of guess I should have expected that, but maybe I thought David Dunn might. But here's the thing: the way David Dunn oh, goes out, arguably the most pathetic death. He gets drowned in a puddle by a fucking TSA agent. Yep. <laughs> Just a ridiculous. And I, I, I know, I'm jumping here a little bit, but that was so unsatisfying. David Dunn in this film was so unsatisfying, and it's not Bruce Willis's fault. No, he was written like this. He had almost nothing to do in the film and therefore did almost nothing. He sat in his room waiting until he got busted out by glass and then, all right, he tries to save the day. He arguably fails. They're in that room. And that's it. Exactly. That is it. He's in the room for so long. They're all in their rooms for so long. Yep. And the scene in the, like, that sort of pink, it actually was a nice scene where the three of them first meet in that pink room. Yeah, look, you say it's nicely shot and it looks nice. It's you one were, of the you, worst you, you fucking would have examples <laughs> of group therapy I think I've ever fucking oh, seen. It's, it's in, first of it's all, it's an abomination. Yeah, from, I knew that. Well, actually, I almost, that's it. I wish I was watching this with Paul. I would just see him cr- cr- rock his head in his hands. 
the thing that it's doing is it shows her explaining away the idea of having superpowers. Yeah. So from a functional point of view, it's actually quite a good scene. I believe that she that scene should therapy whatever side should have occurred earlier in the film. If you're going to do a scene like that, get get them together a bit quicker. Like let let them. Yeah, but I think. What's really offensive about this movie in a mental health standpoint is, okay, yeah. dissociative identity disordered people are all f- terrifying and frightening. They're going to murder us all. Eh, that's okay. kind of where Split went in. Okay. This film says that end, but we can cure it in three days. We can cure it by... Yeah, I've by, got three days to fucking do And that. I was like, you are fucking kidding me. Uh-huh. I have a dissociative identity disordered client who I've had for 15 years. <laughs> yeah, that's already there. I mean, you know what? There was another thing about that scene. In that scene, the three of them sitting next to each other. David Dunn, the hero, has got chains on. The horde has nothing on. I know. And then Sam Jackson is just sitting in the chair. Yeah, because at that point he still hasn't catatonic said a word. Whatever, He's yeah. catatonic and whatever. Yeah. But they and, don't know that. And then, so, okay, this leads nicely into one of the the twists. They're not like Sixth Sense amazing twists, but suddenly no, there's this shadowy organization, which, by the way, is shit enough that they meet in a public place and have to wait till the people that aren't part of it leave before they can say anything. And I'm like, well, that's a fascinating way of going about a meeting. <laughs> We're at a restaurant. What if that couple stayed for fucking ever? What if they were the last ones? What if they had no home, to, like no one to rush home to? They've been waiting a long fucking time. No shit. And if daft. they're if they're a married couple, married couple close down a fucking restaurant, man. They don't ever fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> so that was dumb. And so their purpose was we're protecting the world against these people. Why are we not just putting a bullet in their head? Yes. What is with what is the grand plan to convince them that they don't have powers? What, where are the resources? Who made that yeah, decision? They just, well, they just shot fucking James McAvoy. In the end, they did. Yeah, I know, but like they could have just done that to start with. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this is bullshit. It, okay, like, it just doesn't hold up. The script is is a mess. Maybe there's an idea here that by normalizing these these superhumans in the system, like the public system, right. by letting, then you're actually destroying the ideology of superhumans rather than making rather them than a martyr. Well, that, but also, like, if you just kill them, like, you, they, they get you keep getting born. You can't just kill them. Oh, you can, uh, but I don't know. This is not Star Wars. We're not trying to. Yeah, I suppose you're right. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm I'm batting for the movie here, and it's just losing. Yeah, it just it's, makes zero makes sense. sense. And that at least explained why Sarah Paulson. Like, why is a psychiatrist with a whole bunch of fucking police officers when they just first responded to a fight between these two characters? I know. And, okay. Oh, that was another thing. Yeah. Then we got that explanation because she's part of this group and that we're running the police, sort of somehow. I think. As though the. <sighs> It's such shit because it's it like so you just wouldn't have. I don't know if she's a shrink or an agent or both or what. I right? think she's both, but she's clearly high up because she's the one addressing everybody. Although then she says, "I think we're close." And, but and if she's high up and she's also the one doing the legwork, it doesn't work like that. Agreed. So it's just I don't know, man. You're right. You're absolutely right. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's a weird kind of a. It's just poor writing. This it is, is poor, poor writing. writing. It's I'm trying. I think you said it. He wants to be smarter than everybody else. Yeah. M Night. And he thinks he's woven this great tale. It's going to go one direction. No, we're going in another. And how blown away are you? Well, blown enough to give you fuck all rating. That's how blown away I was. <laughs> and not it. And no uh, in credit scene. Okay, I, thank God I didn't stay around. No, I, I googled like, it, but I was like, bullshit. I am out of here. Yeah, I because I saw it. I was lucky enough to see. I was, and I should say, big thanks to to Tass Jerkin for getting into it. I got into a media screening for this. Yeah, very we're cool. sitting around with some you know recognizable film critics. The buzz walking out. No one was saying great film. No man, because no they one. fucking checked out like three quarters in, like we, like I did. Which is a real shame because I really wanted to like this, and I think probably my score reflects that I had high expectations, and maybe that's on me. Maybe I should have known. It's a fucking no, it's January not on you. release. It's not on you because I had poor expectations, and it's still blue. You know, if this is actually poor. It's a little bit poor craftsmanship or poor editing. At the end, when James McAvoy gets killed, right? Mm-hmm. He does the thing where he falls into the girl's arms, and then he does like four or five personalities before he dies. Yep. That made me roll my fucking eyes. I'm like, oh, here's what's going to happen. Oh, this. Oh, oh, oh. He's just doing that. And I'm like, fuck this shit. This is stupid now. Uh, uh, I also didn't buy for one second, and to, to allude to an earlier point, sorry mm-hmm. to jump in on you there. Yeah. Anna Taylor Joy's character is that was the, the... kidnapped. Yeah. Arguably tortured, almost murdered, and wasn't murdered in the end. And yeah. I want to thank a uh, good friend of the show, Mark, for reminding me of this. Yeah. Because she's broken as well. Yes. Right? So somehow she's formed some kind of Stockholm syndrome connection and now she's with to the... just Kevin, yes. not the rest of the horde. Yep. Just Kevin, because the rest of the horde arguably want her dead, yeah. and she allows herself to be talked into coming back, or wants to come back, for some kind of what? What is her purpose? Is it closure? It, it's the weirdest form of fucking closure and I've that's, ever that's seen. That's why I ask you, as almost as a professional, yeah. is this something that like so you got to close the book on this? Is it, is that going to help? Didn't you? Didn't fly for me. You know what? Didn't there's, establish it at all. There's 
Yeah, go on. The mum. Glass's mum, so Samuel L. Jackson, who is, by the way, 70 years old almost, is his mum is sitting mm. in the, it's like She didn't look 90 to me. In fact, she looked about the same age as Samuel L. Jackson. Black don't crack, though. So- <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. But, uh, I know. It, it at least, I don't know, it, it, there is signs of age. No, it's... it's uh, look, there's bigger... Like, if you look at Lame Night Shyamalan's Shail- stuff, like, it's in Split, right? So, like you said, the girl, mm-hmm. she the only reason she doesn't crack is because she was sexually abu- abused. Yes, by, right? her, by her father, yep. Which they so, one line explain away, yep. Yeah, so I don't think M. Night meant to, <laughs> to talk about how special people who get molested are, but, like, that's yeah. just... Kind of, is there some odd shit going on here? Like, he's got weird ways of, like, this is the plot point. But, mm, you really haven't thought that one through. The only, the only secondary, so to speak, character I thought had a role in this film was David Dunn's son. I thought the other two were completely unnecessary. David Dunn's son is fantastic, because um, you can tell he's still kind of a boy. Mm. Like, he's just, a, he's just a young man now. But, but he's smart-ish. Yeah. You know? Like so, you said, he was Alfred to his Batman. Totally. That's, that's, and that's a good a, description. That's a really cool thing. Like, walking around, it's, you know. I don't know. Last, this, very last point. Yeah. Last thing that really got my goat. This is the moment where I just went, I'm out. This what? movie is shit. It's when Glass... In Max's plan, which is fine, we see how why he's walking through the tunnel at the end, and he never meant to escape, and he knew this was the okay. That 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 was the one twist I thought was fine, right? But mm. where does he get his beautiful suit, perfectly pressed, his monographed cravat? Where does that come from after nineteen years in a fucking uh, psychiatric facility? Was he there for not that long? <laughs> I didn't even think about Which, it. again, another plot hole. Why are we only now dealing with Samuel L. Jackson 19 years after he's been incarcerated? Yeah. Has it been that long? Is it in the show? Oh, my God. Same as uh, Unbreakable. Right? They make illusions. Because the kid was, was whatever he was, six or seven oh, or whatever. Of course, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe he, he had that suit when he was incarcerated the Well, first I thought, time? was he arrested in that? Because I, could, I couldn't remember the end of Unbreakable. But even then, why is it perfectly pressed? Why is it all... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's the level of finicky I got to because this film doesn't earn your attention enough to avoid thinking about that. Yeah, it's it's a shit film. It's it's just shitly written. That's what it is. Hundred percent agree. It's okay, made shitly written. There you go. All right. Well, I got taken to task by one M Night fanboy on my written review on Letterbox who really who like took the time to write like four paragraphs in reply to my holy shit. My, really? My, my, yeah. Go have a read on my on the Letterbox. And I want to thank Kelvin from Go Watch a Movie Podcast who they've just started a website and he, and he said. Can I put your review up on our website? I said, sure. So, mm. might feature the occasional website over there as well. So, nice. go check that out. Uh, yeah, the link will be in the show notes. Yeah. I, I, Obviously, I'm... some people love this film. It doesn't matter how Do bad they? it is. Yeah. Some people. I thought it been wildly like panned. anything. Like, it's like DC. Well, we'll get into that. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry, we got to that yeah. last week. But uh, DC film, some people are just fanboys or girls, regardless of the quality of the product. Me with The Predator, for example. Oh, yes. That's totally you. <laughs> so, not to, not to say I'm above that. All right. So, what's your score? Uh, I give this a 37. Ooh, I went 42. Yeah, okay. 37, you fucking hated it. <laughs> it's two stars, you want to round it, but it was not a good film. I suspect this will be on one of my all-time it's disappointments. Do you know what it is? I've heard someone say this, that uh, M. Night is actually good when he has no pressure on him, but when he's mm. got pressure on him, he just starts to suck. Well, yeah, you look at his career. Yeah. It kind so, like, of does split, follow that track. It was like, was like, yeah, fuck this guy. And then it was ended up being a good movie. Like, if, holy if, shit. I still think if you want to watch one of the worst abomination of films ever made to get released by a major studio system The Lady in the Water <laughs> is a different kind of ego is it really it is incredible it is basically him playing a writer who's basically saying fuck critics and he's going to save the world it's unbelievable <laughs> anyway it been like the one, yeah, yeah whatever, anyway, whatever. that's enough for our review of Glass it's clearly more ass than class most deaf I'm sure you're going to hear that a lot over the next week or three if you haven't already. Thank you very much for joining us for this feature review on The Countdown. Wayne, where can people find us? Just Google The Countdown Movie and TV Reviews. But really, send us an email at thecountdownpodcast at gmail.com um, or you know, on Facebook, search for the name too. Yeah. Look, last week was our DC versus Marvel big film uh, battle off. Oh, yeah. This coming week, dropping in just a few days, is our 200th episode. So please stick around for that. We've got your 20 favourite films of all time. You as listeners, You the people. Have voted and we're very, very pleased. We're very excited to reveal that list to everybody then. It's been a pleasure as always. My name is Paul. My name is Wayne. And we will catch you next time. Oh, kids. And Wait. this is, of course, has been the soundboard. Oh, fuck the soundboard. This is the dumbest shit even use anyone ever way? said in the history of, and I don't think I'm shut accelerating up, up, here. Up, up, time. Up. Did I use it? Yeah. Did You're you? the best around. Ah, uh, well yeah. done. Fuck <laughs> it. All right. <laughs> okay, enough. <laughs> all right, we'll see you next time. See ya.
Hey kids, welcome to the countdown movie review of M. Night Shafak. <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> I'm like, good timing, Wayne, that's excellent.